I'm Adrian, this is my story. I'm Adrian, I'm a youth coordinator with Faction 48 Singapore. I am also the fourth person in Singapore to come out publicly as a person living with HIV. So I was diagnosed uh, five years ago at EFA's Anonymous Testing Clinic. And um, ever since then, shortly after my diagnosis, I started on treatment and I've been on daily medication. So after my diagnosis, I realized that there's a lot of misconception and fear uh, about HIV, and that leads to uh, stigma and discrimination towards PLHIV. Then the next day, I decided to go with my friend to uh, get tested. When it's time for my results, when I went inside the room, uh, he was there. So like, you know, when I stepped inside the room, when I saw him, everything turned pitch black and it was, it felt like everything was like collapsing. So like that night when I was on the way back home, then uh, when I reached home and everyone was asleep, uh, I had suicidal thoughts because it was very, fresh in my head and very much overwhelming. Then, um, when everyone was asleep, I went straight to my room and I stick on my leg out of the window. And yeah, my head was like totally blank and I just wanted to, you know, end my life. Cause like, <clears throat> I thought like, you know, um, it's the end of the world and you know, you know, like there's no cure and stuff like that. And just nice, my best friend actually gave me a call and he said some words of encouragement to stop me from, you know, committing suicide. And he's saying that, you know, um, my life has a lot more meaning now. And, you know, I've come this far despite all my challenges in life. So uh, I think the first few family members I told about my, you know, diagnosis was my siblings. Yeah, so uh, after telling them, I went straight to my parents' room. So there was my mom and my stepdad. And um, when I told them I have, you know, HIV, uh, it was quite challenging initially. But, you know, as months goes by, they, you know, were very concerned and my mom would, you know, check on me to see if uh, I'm seeing the doctor, taking medication. So the changes now, uh, compared to like before I was diagnosed, right? So um, I think the initial part, I do struggle a bit, like, cause I have to like, you know, take medication every day and see the doctor. So, um, so now I'm actually seeing the doctor every six months for like routine checkup. So, and also there's this uh, thing about, you know, if you're living with HIV, you're on active medication, taking every day and seeing the doctor. Um, your viral load, which is the virus in your body, will be undetectable, which means if I were to have sex with someone, I wouldn't pass it to the person. So, like, the most difficult thing I would say, uh, you know, my dating life, if I were to go on dating apps to, you know, go on dates to find a partner, um, the people there can be quite nasty. They would say things like, you know, you're dirty, you shouldn't be here. Um, yeah, so like, um, they don't really understand what it means to, you know, live with HIV. And I think most of them, um, there's a lot of fear going on about HIV. When I got rejection, it makes me question my self-worth. And it takes a lot of work for me to, you know, build up. Like even up till now, I do struggle a little bit. Yeah, so it's more of like ongoing struggle, having people to talk to, which is very important because uh, I tend to like isolate myself when I experience any dark moments in my life. So when I experience all this uh, negative um, remarks from others about my, you know, diagnosis. 
uh, I'm actually reach out to uh, my supportive network like my close friends, um, EFA. EFA has been there for me since day one. And I do attend like support groups and I make new friends who are, you know, living with HIV as well. Okay, so some of the misconceptions that people have about, you know, a uh, person living with HIV is, um, it's a gay disease. HIV is a gay disease, which is not. And usually people who have HIV are you know, very promiscuous and have a lot of sexual partners. Uh, people would think that, you know, um, they can actually easily get HIV from hugging someone, sharing utensils, um, you know, or kissing. Um, and also like, you know, people think that HIV is still the death sentence. I would say I've grown so much ever since, you know, five years ago. Um, and, you know, without the support from a lot of people like close friends, EFA, and also family members and, you know, peers like myself, it shows that, you know, I, a sense of belonging to this community to know that I'm actually not alone in this, yeah. But I do reach out to um, friends more, close friends, and of course, like, um, EFE. EFE is like more like an, another family that I have ever since I was diagnosed. So like um, all the rejections that I have from others and the nasty remarks that I have from others, um, you know, it's not gonna bring me down and I have to thank them because it actually make me stronger as a person. It has always been like my passion to, you know, work in social service. Like, um, so the passion actually goes stronger when I have HIV. So um, being a youth coordinator, uh, I wouldn't want any of the youth to go through what I go through. So um, I actually aspire to be a youth social worker, not just, you know, in HIV work in the future, more of like, you know, uh, working with youth in Singapore because like, uh, for myself, I think I go through quite a lot for the past 30 years of my life and I would like to use uh, the life experience that I had to give back to the community and help others. And it's kind of like um, make me think that, you know, sometimes I do blame myself. Like, you know, life would be so much better if I don't have HIV. Uh, I think for most of my clients that I see, in my job, who are newly diagnosed, um, I think usually the initial part because they are not well equipped with you know um, the things that PLHIV are required to do, and you know the quality of life, like basically that things will get better. Yeah, so that's where I came in when then there's like a positive case at the clinic. Uh, I would step in and you know telling them that you know I've been through all this that you are going through now. So things will get better, I'll do my best to support you and if there's anything you need to know, I'll be willing to share with you. Yeah.